Hello everyone, Idle here, and this is going to be my full video on Unity game hacking. So, before I actually start the video, little disclaimer, this is not going to be a short video at all. It will be very informative, but I have to talk about, um, this. <laughs> okay, so starting with number one, which is why I haven't uploaded in about a year and that's because I was still in school I had to focus on graduating and I couldn't focus on uploading videos and school at the same time so I had to pick one and I picked I picked school I graduated early which is good and uh, I'm back now which is also good <laughs> I'm sorry for all the random cuts that are going to be in this video it doesn't feel is smooth. I like recording everything at once, but I don't have a script right now. My past three videos were scripted. And um, there's the second thing that I wanted to talk about, which was my Discord. Like, I want to say three or four days after I uploaded these few videos, my account got disabled and I kind of just gave up on this whole thing. I am going to be unlisting these three videos which is the reason why is because they're going to be out well this one's outdated of course i might make a new one but these two are going to be outdated from this video because i'm going to cover everything just in this video all right with that stuff out of the way i'm going to get into the main video and if you want the code from whatever i'm about to make i don't even know yet i made a patreon where you can subscribe and it'll give you access to the source code from this video fully made, everything's finished, and you can just download it. That's if you're lazy. So if you wanted to go that route, you can go that route. Um, so what you're going to need is to go to my GitHub. Everything will be in the, the description, by the way. You go to my GitHub and you go to download the IL2 CPP dash base. You go to code, download zip. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it again. You need Visual Studio Community, of course, and you need IL2 CPP Dumper GUI to dump the game that you're working on. Now, if you don't have a game that you have in mind, you can use SteamDB to look for more Unity games. But the thing is, there are two types of Unity games. There is IL2 CPP, and there is just the regular, what's it called? Um, I have to think. Oh yeah, mono. It's called mono. <laughs> there is there is IL2 CPP and mono Unity games. You want IL2 CPP because it's more commonly used. There are some Unity games that are mono because, like for example, Lethal Company is mono. Okay, yeah. As I was saying, Lethal Company is mono, and we're using IL2 CPP because it's more commonly used and this little base that I made is literally made for IL2 CPP. So you have to find an IL2 CPP Unity game. Um, I'm going to cut the video here until I find a game I want to work on. Alright, I found this game in my Steam library and I decided to pick it. We do not have to have the same game as this will be a tutorial for all Unity games, but it will make it easier if you do start on Banana Shooter because the things will just line up, the code will line up. But once you find your game, you will get IL2 CPP Dumper GUI, and you will dump the game. So you go to the first line, the executable file, and you go to your Steam, your Steam apps, and you look for the game. So I'm looking for Banana Shooter right here. And then you want to pick the game assembly, not the game EXE, the assembly DLL. Then your global met metadata should be in the games folder, banana shooter, banana shooter data, IL2 CPP data, metadata, and then right here, and then you start dumping. And then it'll this button will go back to normal when it's finished, or you can look down here. So yeah, that's a, that's a finished dump. Once you have the game dumped, you're going to need IDA Pro. Now, if you don't have IDA, I have to remember I'm on YouTube, there's certain things I can't say. If you don't have Ida, join my Discord server and send me a DM. I'll uh, I'll point you in the right direction. <laughs> so yeah, if you need Ida, 
just DM me on Discord. You're going to open up Ida64. Ooh, there's an ice cream truck in the background. <laughs> you're going to open up Ida64. You're going to disassemble a new file. And you will go to the game. Banana Shooter. You will open the game assembly. And then just press OK. It'll start loading. If it says something about a PDB, just click cancel or click no. Just don't do that because it'll try to load something that you don't have. Yeah, right there. You see how it says banana shooter library. That's from the game developer that like made the game. It should be only on his PC. So once you have it loaded, you're just going to see a bunch of stuff that looks like, I don't know, just random, random numbers. It's going to look crazy. The first thing you need to do is go up here to edit, go to segments, rebase program, and type zero, and then click OK. This will change everything to just no base offset. It'll just have the normal hexadecimal. You don't have to worry about that right now. And then go to file, script file, go to your game folder where you dump the game. Do Ida with struct underscore pi3, and then do script.json, and then il2cpp.h, and it'll start importing the dump that you made into Ida. This is going to take a long time depending on your game. The script could be huge, it could be small, but I'm going to cut the video and wait until it's finished. Okay, the script finished running. I have a warning here, bad declaration. You don't need to worry about that. If you do get this warning, just click OK. And you'll notice, if you look at your function window, when the script is finished... Oh, I'm... I'm oh, I'm dying. <laughs> I have to wait. Okay, yeah. You want to disable the analyze right here. So just make sure this has a line through it. Because if, if that is analyzing, Ida takes up a lot of your CPU. It will eat your CPU. You do not want that to happen. But you'll notice in your functions window that you'll have a lot of the functions named. It's not, it's not numbers anymore. A lot of them aren't numbers anymore. So you'll see right here, you can see the functions of the game. Now, what you can do with this is you can hook these functions, you can call them, you can you can do whatever with them, but this is like a full game dump for you. And I forgot to mention, if you don't have the option for a Python script, because you can see it says idc.py, if you can't load a Python script, you probably need to install Python. And there is a certain version of Python that Ida needs. Let me go check that right real quick uninstall add or remove programs yeah you're going to need this this python version 3.10.6 higher versions of python will cause errors with ida 7.5 which is the ida that i'm using so you will need a you will need this exact python version make sure you have this one installed if you get any errors Okay, now that we have the game dumped in Ida, we can go look at our actual code. So right here we have the IL2 CPP base from our GitHub. Um, you would open up the solution file and it will open in Visual Studio. I don't think it opens to this, so what you'll have to do is go on the right over here, go to source files and then go to main.cpp and it should open this file. You wanna scroll down until you find this right here, init chair comment out the find sigs and enable hooks so just put two slashes behind it like this to comment out both of these make sure these are both commented out because it will crash your game if you don't the reason why i'm commenting these out and not deleting them is because they are functions that we can use later on so once you do that try to build it and you can see it was built right here so i'm going to copy that or i can just go look right here so this is our DLL that we built. So we don't have any code, but we're just going to see if it injects into the game. 
So I'm going to go get process hacker. Then we have Banana Shooter, the game's opening in the background. Miscellaneous, Inject ELO. And it's a good thing to wait until your game is fully open before you try to inject anything. So it's still loading, I'm going to wait. That is loud, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, you will find your DLO and then you just wait for your game to open. I don't know why this is taking so long. Okay, now that we have the game open, I'm going to go back to Process Hacker, and I'm going to inject our DLL that we just built. And there you go, as you can see, it opened up perfectly fine. Which means we can close our game and actually add code to the menu. So this is a base menu that I made. We're going to add features to it. I'm going to close out the game, and then now we can go back to Visual Studio. So the reason why I had you dump the game in Ida was because you can look at the game's functions and find the names. So let's say we wanted to find the get camera function. We would type in camera. Oh yeah, Ida is very, very laggy. It's just going to be that way. So I know the, I already knew the name of this function was camera get main, but so let's say we needed the address for this. We could either use this right here, or we could go to our find six function. And the way that this works is we declare the class that we're getting the function from. So we're using the unity engine camera class. So I'm just going to name it UE camera class. And it would be Unity Engine underscore camera, but that underscore is actually a dot. As you can see right here, it's it's named right here. Unity Engine dot camera. So we would copy that. And then it's get main. So I'll explain this right now. So what we're doing is we're getting the Unity Engine camera class, we're finding the class, and we're getting the method pointer of get main. And then I'm assigning it the variable of set target recoil, but that's not what it actually is. So we can go into our oh let me explain what I just did. So you control click, hold down your control key and then click. It'll take you to where this is. And I you see how I did this, use this to hold offsets for functions. You would click the name, then press Control D. It'll make a new line, and I'll name this one "Get Main Camera." Get Main Camera. So offsets Get Main Camera. I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna go back to our main file. So offsets Get Main Camera equals Get the method pointer of Get Main. And then this is our debug logs. Um, so we're going to log the offset of get main camera and we're going to name it get main camera. So we can build. We're not doing anything with this yet. We're just getting the offset of the function to make sure it was right. So as, while that's building, I'm going to reopen the game. And it's finished building gonna go back to the game I don't know why it's like this let me um that's not good <laughs> there okay so it's windowed now we're gonna use process hacker to inject this again it didn't print out Why is that? Oh, it's it's doing that because I didn't uncomment out find six. I'm going to leave that in just, just so you guys know. So yeah, you need to remove the comment to let this code run. We're going to build again. Uh, 
It's all trial and error. So there we go, it's built. And then we're going to re-inject. Then as you can see, git main camera is 1744090. So we can go into IDA to confirm that. Let's go back to IDA. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press G, the letter G, to jump to address. And then I'm going to paste that in. And as you can see, yeah, it's the right address. I didn't really need to jump to it because I, I was already looking at it, but just to show what you can do. So yeah, we have the address to get main camera right here. And as you can see, all you need is the method info pointer, but you don't really need to use this. So this is a no argument function. It returns a Unity engine camera and it doesn't take in any arguments. So you can just call this function. Okay, so now we have the address to get main camera. Now I'm going to show you what we can do with function addresses. Since we have the offset get main camera, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this. Oh my god. <laughs> we're going to go to our header files. We're going to go to game and we're going to go to functions.h. These are all functions that I made from different games, but you, you can still use these, so just keep these in here. As you can see, I already have one for a get main. You can see Unity Camera Get Main Camera. Now let's say you didn't want to do the find six function. Let's say you didn't want to use this. You see how I have Game Assembly plus 0x0? Zero zero? Those are those numbers in IDA. That's what these are. These are the offsets to the function. We are in the game assembly and get main camera is located at 17440090. So you could copy this address and put it in here like this. So this is the same as get main camera. If we wanted to call this, it is in our functions namespace and it is get main camera. So let me go to our loop here, our render loop. And let's say I wanted to get the main Unity camera. I would do functions, get main camera. And if I hover it over it, it says it gives me Unity C camera. That is the Unity camera. And I could declare this as a variable auto, auto camera equals get main camera, functions dot get main camera. Print it out, print F camera. This is just an example, so if you are experienced with this, you're gonna be like, what is he doing? But no, I'm just I'm just trying to explain what I'm doing. I'm just trying to show you that it actually works. So I'm going to build this and we're going to open the game. So what this is doing is this is getting a pointer to the camera and this is printing out the the pointer as a number. That's what percent %d means in the printf function. So if I injected this, we are calling get main camera and our camera value is this. So I just called a function in the game. I'm calling this function. I am, I'm calling this function with the address. So that's how you call a function. Let me go back to it so I can explain. So all you need to do is declare the function, this would be the arguments, and this is the offset to the function. But since we already have this, since we're getting it dynamically, or should, yeah, since we're getting it dynamically in our code with our find six function, we're going to use this instead. So I'm just showing you both ways. You could either use the game assembly with the offset, or you can use that find six function that I gave you, which lets you just use the class instead of the, the offset from Ida. The find six way is an easier way because you can get the functions by name. So let me show you this way. So what I did just now was I replaced the offset with the one from the find six function. Let me inject this. And then you get the same result. You get the find camera because our logs it logged and then we're calling that find camera function. 
Now let's say we wanted to set our camera's recoil. I mean, not our recoil. Let's say we wanted to set our camera's field of view. <laughs> so I'm going to make a new line in our functions.h. I'm going to make a comment. You don't have to do this, but I just do this so I can remember. I'm going to do unity engine underscore camera. And it is set. I think it is field of view. I think it's like that. I'm going to search that up in Ida. So yeah, right here, Unity Engine Camera Set Field of View. And as you can see, the address for this is 1744830. It takes in a camera and it takes in a float. So what we'll do here is we'll make a new function for this. We'll do void set field of view. And we will take in a float. FOV. And we also need to, yeah, we also need to take in the camera. So we're going to do Unity C camera cam. And that should, that error should go away. Yeah, there we go. And what we need to do here is do void, because our return type is a void open parentheses, unity calling convention, the unity calling convention is just a fast call. So you don't need to do this. You can just do underscore underscore fast call. It's the same thing. Just, I prefer to have it consistent. So I'm going to put unity calling convention and then I'm going to name it set FOB. This name doesn't matter. You can just put T if you wanted. But yeah, that's what I'm going to put. Then we're going to put a, it takes in a unity. These are the arguments of the function that we're about to call. So we're going to take in a unity camera and we're going to take in a float. You don't need to name them. You just need to put the, the things that it takes in. And then we block it off with the semicolon. Then after that, we're going to return a reinterpret cast. The type will be the T, because that's what we put. Or it would be set FOV if you put set FOV. Whatever you named it here, basically. So we're putting T. And then the function address of the function that you're calling. So I'm not going to use the find six function. I could, but I'm not going to do it just to show. So I'm going to do SDK and then the game assembly plus, and that's the offset from Ida. 1744830 is set field of view. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put zero X and then paste it. And then I put an open parentheses and a close parentheses, and then a semicolon. I spelled, <laughs> I spelled the type wrong. There we go. So now we have a set field of view function. So now in our render, our render loop, I am going to do, we're getting to the main camera, and then I'm going to do functions, set field of view with our camera that we're getting comma 120.0f. No suitable constructor. Oh, did I forget something? Oh, I see. I forgot to make this a pointer. Yes, we're getting a, this is a pointer to the camera, not just the, the camera. It's a pointer. So yeah, that should fix it. I'm going to open up banana shooter again. And wait for our deal to finish building. Oh, too few arguments in function call. Oh, I forgot to pass the, <laughs> I forgot to pass them over. See, I'm forgetting things left and right. So yeah, we need to put the camera and the FOV. So that's how you would reconstruct a function from 
the game pretty much or call the function or whatever you want to call it but this is how you would call the game's functions you basically remake them and then say where they are in your code so there we go we have the set field of view function it takes in the camera and it takes in an fov then it calls the function with the camera and fov that we give it and then this is our render loop i don't have it under a toggle right now this is just like this code will run over and over and over but as you can see this is stuff from the menu like fov changer crosshair this is stuff that i have already so I'm going to build it. Yeah, it's built. So when I inject this, it should zoom out the game. Yep, there you go. See how the FOV changed? So yeah, that that worked. I just called the game's functions. And I just closed the game. So that's fine. So that's how you call functions. I'm going to, to delete this because this was just an example. Now I'm going to show you how to do like a basic ESP. So in our init, this is like the first thing that runs when the game's hooked. So we have Kiro init. Kiro is the library that we're using to hook present. As you can see right here, we're binding it. We're init chair. So we go here. This is the code that runs as soon as the DLL is injected. As you can see, we're creating a thread called player cache. So we're gonna go here. What this does is it is finding all objects with a character controller component attached to it. This will work for most games as a player list, but some games might need something else. So any thing in your game that has a character controller will be in our player list. It will be pushed back into the player list, the game object. And then if you do control F on player list, you'll see down here, if player list size is greater than zero, we're going to verify that the pointer is valid and we're going to get the player position. And then you can see snap lines. I already have basic snap lines in here. So you don't need to add any code. There should be like basic ESP code in here already. I'm not going to go through like all of that. Let me go into the, let's see if there is, I haven't played this game in forever. Yeah, the shooting range and then inject our DLL. I'm going to wait until the game's fully loaded so I don't crash or anything. Okay, so we're in the shooting range. I'm going to inject our DLL, and then I'm going to turn on snap lines. And as you can see, there are no player controllers. I mean, there are no character controllers. Okay, so as I was explaining, the player cache gets anything with a character controller component. The reason that there were no snap lines was because there was no character controller component in our player. So what you can do in this situation is go get Melon Loader and install it. So we're going to select our Unity game, Banana Shooter. I'm going to install it. And then we're going to look for Unity Explorer. Unity Explorer. What this does, it's like, eh, it's like, I want to describe it as a cheat engine made for Unity, but that's not exactly what it is. It basically lets you see all of the objects in a Unity game. You need Melon Loader to run the mod itself. So we installed Melon Loader, and we need to go to our game files, installed files, browse, and it should have opened. Yeah, Banana Shooter. You can see we have all this stuff now. Our mods folder, we need to go get Unity Explorer. We're going to get the IL2 CPP version. We're going to download the zip file. We're going to go up because this doesn't go exactly. We're going to go, so right here, you see mods and user data. We're going to just drag that over and that should be in there. Now, when we open the game, it should open with a console window. There we go. So 
So this is like the full full thing. This is everything I use when I'm making a cheat for a Unity game. So Melon Loader will initialize, it'll do its thing. This only happens, well the assembly generator only happens once. This does take a bit, but it's worth it. If you, you should see a Unity Explorer window. I don't have it because there's an error, let me see. Could not load file or assembly on hollow or base lib. Oh yeah, this version of Unity Explorer is broken. I think I have to go use the other one. Give me one second. So I'm pretty sure I figured it out. There is a fixed Unity Explorer somewhere. I already had it downloaded. If you need it, I'll just put it in my Discord server. You can go download it from there or I'll put it in, in the description, something like that. So this is Unity Explorer. You can open and close it with F7 or you can just push this button right here. I'm going to go into the shooting range and I'm going to look for a local player in the scene explorer. I think it's at the bottom. Yeah, local player. And then we have the player as a child here. This game's structured pretty weird, but this is the player object itself, but its child is the actual player. It's it's a weird structuring. Just This is like the only game I've seen this happen in. So it will be different for your game. As you can see, the player's components, it has a rigid body and a capsule collider. I think this is what we can use to differentiate between each player. So let me do rigid body. I'm going to do rigid body in object search. So yeah, a lot of things have a rigid body. Let me try capsule collider. A lot of things have a capsule collider. I'm going to show you what you can do in this situation. So I'm going to do rigid body, unity engine dot rigid body. That's what the player has. So our code is wrong. We're looking for a character controller, but the actual thing is a rigid body. So we're going to replace that. We're going to build it. Now our snap lines should point to everything that is a rigid body. My game's still open, by the way. I just closed Unity Explorer. So I have to wait for this to build. I'm gonna get ready to inject the DLO. Yep, it's finished building. Go into the game. So either either you crash or it'll work. That's how I that's how I see it. Looks like it's working. And what is, why, why is this not working? Now I have to figure out why this isn't working. Okay, so I figured out the issue with why things weren't rendering. For some reason in this game, your camera is not your camera, if, if that makes sense. Your main camera is not your actual camera. Once again, this is another game that I, I've never seen this happen in, but as you can see, if I do first person camera, if I disable it, it stops rendering right there. And if I enable it, it's back. So this is the actual camera. But in my code, when I do get main camera and I try to print it out, it gives me zero. So there is no main camera. Your camera is first person camera. So the way to fix this is, I'm going to get first person camera. Whenever I need the camera, I'm going to do this instead. So camera main, I'm going to change this to unity game object find. And we're going to find first person camera. So this is a game object. So I'm going to do auto instead of unity camera, auto camera object. So this is first person camera. If we have the camera object, if camera object, this is just to make sure you don't crash. If camera object isn't equal to no pointer, um, oh no, if it is equal to no pointer, we're going to return false. This is our world to screen, by the way, in our functions.h header. 
So if camera, if the camera object can't be found, we're going to return false for the world to screen. After this, we should have the camera object. So we're going to do auto. All right, now we're going to do Unity C camera because this is the actual camera, not the. Let me explain. So the game object is first person camera, and the camera has a transform, a Unity engine component, and a camera component. The actual camera is this component, not the game object. So if I disable the component, right there you can see, this is what matters, not the game object itself. The component is what matters. So Unity C camera, we're gonna use the game object. We're gonna do a, we're gonna access it. Wait, what am I doing wrong? Oh yeah, this is just the name, I'm stupid. Okay, <laughs> camera, camera main, equals the camera object get component and then the the component's name will be a unity engine camera or the component type whatever so we're getting the camera component from the camera object and it's going to say unity component cannot be used to initialize a unity camera all you need to do is cast it so there we go. Open parentheses, camera, and then closing parentheses. This basically just tells your code that this is a Unity camera. If there's no camera main, we're gonna return false. So we're gonna build that. Oh, it's not gonna let me build it because I'm using it right now. Let me close the game. Then reopen the game. All right, we know you just wait. I don't know why this takes forever. Okay, so we're gonna reopen that. So that's that's here and in our main. I added code, but that's because I was testing stuff. Don't worry about this. So in our FOV changer, we're getting the current camera. I was also testing here. But as you can see, this is how we get it now. So let me copy this. Camera main. So in our FOV changer. Gonna remove that. Going to if camera main isn't equal, yeah, so you don't need that either. Camera object. If camera object isn't equal to null pointer, then we're gonna continue with this code. There you go. Then we're gonna build this. Don't worry about what I'm doing here. Honestly, just I'm trying, I want to explain it, but it's kind of hard to, to explain it. You shouldn't need to do this if you're working on another game. It's just because the person that made this game wanted to stop people from cheating. So I have to do like, I have to do like magical stuff to get this to work properly. It should not be this hard. So yeah, we're waiting for it to build and then I'm going to inject. Okay, so it's finished building. And there we go. So if I do FOV changer, it still doesn't work for some reason. What about the world's screen? It still doesn't work. Main camera is zero. Let's see. So we're getting the first person camera. I think, I think you don't need to put Unity Engine here. I think that's what it is. I think it's because I put Unity Engine in front of it. Because if it wasn't finding the object, it would have just it wouldn't have printed anything because it would have already returned. So yeah, that's my that's my little theory. That's my theory there. So let me try this. Like I said before, it's all trial and error. You're gonna have to do a lot of restarts, a lot of a lot of this to figure out what's wrong with your code. Custom mode, shooting range. There we go. So we have the uh, we have the lines working now. If I turn on snap lines, still that doesn't work. But I'll figure that out later. But I was doing a test line to see if I could get the camera working. So what about the FOV changer? Yep, there we go. FOV is working. 
not perfectly, but it is working. We have a line rendering. Now we have to figure out the player list. Yep, main camera right there. Perfectly fine. So in our main, this was test code, so I'm gonna remove this. This is what was drawing the line. We we're drawing the line to nothing. I'm gonna remove this. So we have FOB changer working. Now we have to figure out why this isn't working. Okay, so I figured out the issue with the things not rendering properly, and it was because, let me go to the render loop. It's because you're trying to get the local player position, but we never set the value of the local player. We're getting players, or I should say we're getting objects, but we're never telling our code who local player is. So we were trying to get the local player position without having a local player, which is why nothing was happening because our code was just returning right here. So yeah, now that I have this, you can see there's a line under me, but there's also lines to other things, which is not good. So yeah, this is a rigid body cube. It's because we're getting all of the rigid bodies. See, that's a rigid body too. We need a way to figure out what a player is and what's a rigid body. So, so far what we've done is we've gotten to the camera. We've gotten the camera and we've gotten like rigid bodies. We're drawing lines to every rigid body. You have to make sure that this line is commented out or else nothing will happen because it's just going to return on this because there's no local player. And what else? That's about it, yeah. So with this game, you cannot use camera main. You have to get it manually like this. Go back to the game. So I'm gonna open up Unity Explorer. And we're going to look for object search. I'm gonna search up rigid bodies. So there's bodies, these are probably like bones for players. And then we have player, inspect game object. So what I think we can do is every object with the name player, every object with the name player is a player. So I'm going to do it like that. So I'm gonna do it this way. In my player loop, let me make sure I have this right. So it's just capital player. I'm gonna close the game. And then in my code, go to my player cache. So this is where we're grabbing every player. So here, we're checking the list. So this is like the actual loop. We're finding all rigid bodies. For each rigid body in this list, we're gonna make sure that the pointer is valid. If it's not valid, we're gonna continue on to the next thing. And then what I'm going to do now is if it's strmp, something like that, if player, so this is string compare, if player, and then comma, we're gonna do list operator, we're gonna do get name, and then we're gonna do two string, and then we're gonna do equals zero. So let me see, make sure I did this right. List operator string to, oh yeah, I have to do dot, dot C like that. Okay, so basically what this does, it checks if the component name is player or if the component's object is player or whatever whatever you, you want to say if it's player then we're going to push it back so we are only pushing back things that have the name player and this should work go into banana shooter
Let me double check my code as well. So string compare player list operator get name. So we're getting the name. Then we're pushing back if the name is equal to player. That looks about right. I'm do custom mode shooting range. So yeah, you see how there's no more lines to that. Let me go to that cube. See, there's no line to this cube. That line is under me because I'm. I have a player name. My my name is player in in the code. So it will only show us players now. Go to multiplayer browse server. So yeah, that's one way. If you have a lot of objects with the yeah, see. So there's a there's an ESP. We can see everyone through the walls. So that's how you would do an ESP. wasn't It wasn't that difficult. This game has some weird stuff, as in it it shouldn't have been that hard. Because most games I can just do this in like I can do this in three minutes max but this game's kind of weird for some reason so now what i'm going to do next yeah there's an fov changer the fov is glitching um i'll fix that right now so let's say we wanted to fix our fov what we could do is hook the fov function so let's go look for let's go into ida do set fov or set field of view something like that that's what it's called, right? Set field of view. Wait for Ida to, Ida to finish loading. Yeah, it took it took two minutes to search for that. That's crazy. But yeah, we're going to do set FOV, our set field of view. And the address is here, but we don't want to use the address. The reason why I don't like to use addresses is because if the game developer updates their game, these addresses change, which is why I made this little find six function it does it by the name not the number so i'm going to control click on get main camera it's going to take us to our offsets i'm going to do offsets sets field of view you can name these whatever it doesn't matter whatever is consistent to you that's up to you and then i'm going to do control d so since we're still in the camera class i don't need to add another class declaration but we do need to add another offset so i'm going to paste set field of view here and the method pointer we need the method name so set field of view right here so now this should contain the set field of view function and i'm going to press Control d on the log then set field of view so now it will log both of the addresses to these functions and this should contain set field of view. Now, what I'm going to do now is in our enable hooks, first of all, I'm going to uncomment it because it was commented at the beginning. Remember to remove this. And then I'm going to control click to get back to it. This was from Combat Master. If you know what Combat Master is, it's a basically a Call of Duty clone on Steam. I was also working on stuff for this. Um, but I'm not going to do that in this video. So I'm going to remove this. The The function that we're hooking is set field of view. So we're going to replace that. Replace both of these. And then you see right here, function set target recoil. This is a hook that I made. So we're going to control click on this. This was a recoil hook for combat master. But I'm not using this. This, this isn't combat master. So we're not going to do that. So what we need to do is camera. So yeah, Unity C camera. Instead of this, we're going to do Unity C camera. And then the float value. So float is right here. And the same thing with the second line. We're going to put a Unity camera, camera, and then float FOV. And I'm going to name this set FOV original so this is the original function right here that we're declaring and then we're going to do set fov underscore hook hk 
So whenever the game goes to set your FOV, we're going to do if vars FOV changer. So if our FOV changer is on, we are going to set FOV, the FOV from the function, FOV will equal vars FOV, camera FOV. And then we are going to return set FOV original with the camera and FOV. Now our main is going to have an error since we renamed these. So the first one should be your hook, set FOV hook and set FOV original. Now when we inject this, set FOV should be hooked. Let's go back to banana shooter. I'm going to be going to the shooting range just so I don't have to go look for a match because we're only testing our FOV right now. So I'm going to do FOV changer. And then as you can see, it's all smooth now. Before it was glitching and it was zooming out because the game was trying to reset your FOV, but now it's just, since we're hooking the function, we no longer have that issue. Okay, so with the FOV hook finished, I think tomorrow, the video I'm going to record tomorrow, I will do Skeleton ESP and Aimbot. Um, I don't want to make this video like hours long, but I also don't want to split videos into multiple parts, so I'm kind of torn. Just let me know in the comments what you guys prefer. Also, I want to thank you guys for, what, 750 subscribers. That's crazy, off with three videos. And um, yeah, peace.